Hi, my name is Magna Nudal. I'm an airline captain and instructor. A year ago, I made a video about some misconceptions about how a wing produces lift. This was my very first video, and I was eager to do it right. Here on YouTube, I found a video showing how the air is flowing around the wing. It was made by Holger Babinski, professor in the Department of Engineering at the University of Cambridge in UK. I contacted him and he gave his approval to use the video. I put my video together and published it. But that didn't impress Professor Babinski. So he sent me a document explaining lift in a much easier way. So let me present the best way to explain lift correctly. If you have very little time to explain lift, then this is the way to do it. Lift is created when the wing pushes air downwards, in other words, redirecting the airflow. And please note how this figure is made. It's not this or this, but this. Okay? If your listener is not satisfied with your explanation, you will need a little more time. Imagine a small cube of air in an airflow. Atmospheric pressure is acting on all sides of the cube, fore, aft, left, right, above and below. When the air pressure is equal on all sides, there is no net force acting on the cube and it will move in a straight line with a constant speed. If there is a variation in the net pressure, there will be a force acting on the cube, causing it to change speed and or direction. For example, when the pressure behind the cube is higher than the pressure in the front, the cube will accelerate. And when the pressure behind the cube is less than the pressure in the front of the cube, it will decelerate. The larger the pressure difference, the larger the change in velocity. Are you with me so far? Good. Now, let's see what happens when the pressure difference is acting perpendicular to the airflow. For example, when the pressure on top of the cube is higher than the pressure below, the cube will accelerate downwards. This is called centripetal force, and the airflow will follow a curved path. This means when the airflow follows a curved path, the air pressure will decrease towards the center of the curvature, and this is lift. Are you satisfied with this explanation? Or shall I give a demonstration? When you are blowing over a paper like this, you will see that it lifts up. But this doesn't prove Bernoulli's principle. The reason is, when you hold a paper vertically and blows along one of the sides, it doesn't move. And if it moves, it is in the opposite direction. The reason is that the paper is straight and not curved and the air pressure is equal on both sides. When the paper is curved, the air steam follows the curve of the paper, and as I just told, the air pressure will decrease towards the center of the curvature, causing lift. This is called the Kawanda effect. Let me give an example from the nature. When there is a vortex in the atmosphere, either a low pressure system, a tropical storm, or a tornado, you will notice two things. One, the air is flowing in a circular pattern. Two, the air pressure is low in the center and increases when you move away from the center. And the larger the pressure change, the faster the air changes velocity. The most extreme example is a tornado, where the velocity can reach more than 300 miles per hour or 500 kilometers per hour. The air pressure in the center of a tornado is low enough to suck large objects up in the air. So, we have air moving in a circular pattern, and the air pressure is lowest at the center of the circle and increases outwards. Whenever you see a streamline that is not straight, but curved, then there is a pressure difference across the streamline direction. And the pressure is always larger on the outside. Now, let's put a curved shape in an airflow. As the air is flowing over the shape, 
It is compressed and follows the curvature of the shape. Since the airflow is following a curved path, the air pressure must decrease towards the shape. In other words, the air pressure at A is higher than at B. Do you agree? Good. And below, the curvature causes the airflow to expand and follow the curvature of the shape. Since the airflow is following a curved path, the air pressure must decrease away from the shape. In other words, the air pressure at C is higher than at D. Do you agree? Good. Since the air at A and D have the same pressure, the pressure at B must be less than at C. And this is lift. When we look at the wings of birds, early airplanes and hang gliders, we see that the wing profile is shaped with a thin curvature. Those wings provide a lot of lift. The sail of a sailboat acts in the same way. However, thin wings do have limitations. Birds are okay because they have a very low wing loading. But airplanes are made of heavy materials and are made to carry a payload. Therefore, a thin wing must be braced with struts and wires. Many early airplanes were constructed with two wings mounted one above the other, like a box kite. This made the construction more rigid, but the struts and the wires produced a lot of drag, limiting the top speed of the airplane. Since the mid-1930s, most airplanes have been constructed as monoplanes with self-bearing wings. The wings become thicker and heavier, but they allowed for a higher speed, and the volume inside the wing can be used to store landing gear, fuel and armament. Modern wings have a convex underside. This in fact reduces the effective lift, but it reduces the drag at high speeds, and that is more important. When you want to fly slow, for example a takeoff and landing, you will use what is called high lift device. Most common is the flaps. When the flaps is extended, the wing has a larger curvature. This, of course, increases lift. And some airplanes, especially high-speed airplanes, have a leading edge slats, further increasing the curvature of the wing. And this is how lift is explained without using other physical principles than variations in air pressure, as observed in the nature. So, what about Bernoulli and Newton? Shall we forget them altogether? No, we should not. But we should start to use Bernoulli's principle in the right way. And that is that the sum of the air pressure in an airflow is constant. This applies to pressure differences along streamlines. When the pressure changes, there must be a change in velocity. And this relation between pressure and velocity is, in fact, Newton's second law of motion. This page shows the relation between Newton's second law and Bernoulli's equation. It is written by Professor Babinski and published in Physics Education, November 2003. I put a link below. When I made my first video about lift, I was very enthusiastic and made some errors. I admit that. But anyway, I hope this video set the thing straight. And if you want to learn more, please check out the links below. Please support my channel by sharing with your friends and all that. Thank you for watching, have a wonderful day and happy learning!